Well, third time's the charm. Um, my life. Hmm, where to begin? Well, let's see here. I was the youngest of five kids. Um, I was born into a religion called Jehovah's Witnesses. And there, if anybody who doesn't know what a Jehovah's Witness is, it's uh, an organization, um, a religious group that's headed by an organization known as the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. And um, my parents claim to be very devout to the religion. I mean, we attended Thursday night meetings and Sunday morning meetings, as well as had Bible studies and went out in field service and all that crap. Uh, even though I was one of five children, um, my siblings either had already moved out or were on their way out when I was born. So I pretty much grew up an only child at that point. Nearest neighbor was one to two miles away, but it really didn't matter anyway because, well, I wasn't allowed to play with, uh, neighborhood kids because they were considered worldly. Um, uh, you know, the whole bad association and shit. Uh, as I was growing up, I seemed to have this attraction. Uh, and I was, I just clinged to, to guys. I mean, I, there was nothing sexual about it. I just gravitated toward them. Uh, nobody said anything about it. No one... No, I didn't think anything of it until I uh, until I hit puberty, um, and the hormones started raging, and that's when I figured out, oh, hey, I think I'm gay. And and I during puberty I was kind of yeah really. To, to put it into perspective, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, I mean, I'd, I'd say I'm some built jock in school, and it really got me excited. But at the same time, I was really disgusted. Disgusted because I was raised to hate homosexuality. I was raised to hate the very thing that I was discovering that I was. And I prayed and I prayed and <laughs> cried and prayed uh, for help. Basically, please, Jehovah, help me with this. Help me to overcome this and feel worthy. Help me not to feel like the scum of the earth that I know I am. Um, of course, on top of this, my mother... Uh, my mother was not always a Jehovah's Witness. She was um, actually born Pentecostal Holiness. She was raised in, in that sect. And uh, if anybody knows anything about Pentecostal Holiness, ooh. yeah. Uh, anyway, she, in her best Pentecostal background fact fashion, preached about Armageddon, which just ended up giving me nightmares. And. Honestly, some of the nightmares that I had, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Uh, and basically, this, her preaching and me dealing with this, it just made me feel, I prayed even harder, and I didn't want to tell anyone. I didn't want to confide in anyone. I, I was afraid. Uh, here I was so many nights carrying this load crying, praying, hoping wishing that something would happen something would make me not feel this way anymore something that would make me not feel so dirty and ashamed of myself uh, I ended up I, I ended up just giving up on myself at one point. And, and and my prayers went from please Jehovah help me to if I have any salvation left, please pass it on to my family since they're the ones that act normal. 
yeah and at that point I was I, I thought about death all the time I, I even attempted suicide twice it's unsuccessful obviously couldn't really go through with it um, so I not only felt like some sort of boil on the butt of humanity but I also felt like a coward because I, I couldn't follow through with doing away with myself uh, I, I just couldn't bear it anymore I, I couldn't carry this anymore so there at last I ended up sitting down and I wrote a letter to my family to my parents specifically telling them how I felt why I was acting the way I was what I was going through in my head I I couldn't face them with this it was just too much and that's I purposely at the end of the letter wrote specifically I am gay and I did that for one reason and one reason only I did that because some reason I knew in my head that if I put it at the beginning of the letter that they my parents would not have been able to get past that they they would have just I don't know tossed the rest of it and I wanted them to know how I felt I wanted them to know what pain and turmoil I was going through and but I guess I was being hopeful I guess I was being I had some wish that I would get some sort of understanding from my parents and they would help me get over this they would not they wouldn't help me to not feel so bad about myself yeah no I did get understanding I got it in the form of a figurative slap in the face about who my parents really were I mean, they preached a lot about unconditional love while I was growing up well yeah that was a big contradiction because it showed me how much their love was conditional um, I was basically told by my mother since I could not live by Jehovah's rules that I could not live in their house anymore and I was to leave pretty much immediately. I didn't have any place to go. I didn't have any friends. Oh, my mother did tell me. She says if I were to come back, uh, I could not bring any of my friends with me. So, yeah. And, and growing up being the good Jehovah's Witness, I didn't really have any friends because, well, the whole bad association spoils useful habits thing, which they repeatedly crammed down my throat throughout the years. <sighs> so, I didn't have anyone. Well, I ended up moving out. And I went through this process, this waking up I guess um, and it was hard it was very hard because I had so many internal conflicts I didn't understand why my parents who who were preaching love and oh Jehovah's Witnesses are the most loving organization and and we extend that love to our family and yada 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 and and and, and why they were acting the way they were I mean, and yeah, when when I came out to my parents, they were, I, the next day I got a call from my siblings. 
Well, um, basically, one told me, oh, it's just a phase. You'll, you'll grow out of it. Another one told me, you just need to screw a woman. If you screw a woman, you will get over this whole gay thing and everything will be okay. And uh, another one just told me, you're not gay. You, no, you're not gay. No. And the other one kept silent. He was the only one that didn't call me. Well, the one that told me that said that I just needed to screw a woman, he uh, basically told me that he was going to kidnap me and take me up on East River Mountain, uh, which is in Bluefield, and um, told me he was going to have, uh, hire a prostitute to rape me. And I just looked at him, and I rolled my eyes at him, and, and I said... <laughs> If you try that, I will slap charges on you so fast, it will make your head spin. Well, he backed off. But, uh, anyway. Yeah. Family in love. Who would have thunk it? I mean, the whole con... All these conflicts, like... I always heard that God was love personified. If that was true, why was I being rejected? Um, for years after that, I played the events over and over in my head, trying to think of ways I could have done it differently, even though I'm no time traveler, I can't go back in time, I can't change the past. Uh, I regretted my coming out, I wished I were dead, or at least never born. My sister, for a while, she kept in contact with me, and for a while she told me that she wanted me to come to Florida where she lived and she would show me the gay lifestyle in Florida she kept on and on and I kept refusing because I felt something was completely wrong with the idea here was my sister a devout Jehovah's Witness telling me that she was going to show me all the gay night spots and everything in Florida yeah so I finally confronted her with it and she admitted that she just wanted me to come down there and so she could convert me and try to get me back into the truth. Yeah. I was offended by that. I was... The use of deception to get me to do something that was supposedly in mine and God's best interest. Yeah. A few years later, she ended up telling me that she wished I died from AIDS so that I could be resurrected in the new system. And I know in her twisted little JW mind that she thought she was expressing her love toward me. Oh, if you can't stop being gay, I just wish you were you would die so that you would have a chance what the fuck who tells anyone that who tells oh I, I really wish you would die from a wasting debilitating disease so that I can see you again yeah that's love as the years went on, I started doing research, started looking at things with a more critical eye, a skeptical eye, actually using reason instead of writing on faith. And everything I found I presented to my family. And all I got was a, why are you bad-mouthing Jehovah? I'm not bad-mouthing Jehovah. I'm just Showing the fallacies of the watchtower. Showing the fallacies of the teachings. And when they told me that, I basically all those years of hearing make the truth your own just went down the tubes for me. It, it wasn't about truth. It was, it was about comfort. It was about being wrapped in a blanket and feeling all cozy and warm. Even though the blanket might be made of some sort of toxic radioactive material. 
I found no comfort all those years growing up. The blanket was itchy and scratchy, like being wrapped in still wool. Of course, all of this still perpetuated my whole cognitive dissonance about religion in general, God, love, and support. I mean, how could my family who preached love and understanding be the way they are? After a while, thinking and obsessing and rethinking and obsessing, I had my finale. It was in the form of a nervous breakdown. All the conflicts, the worries, worrying about what others thought, the research, the, the dissonance, it all just got the better of me. I felt like a computer that was given conflicting but equally important instructions. I felt like someone told me to solve the question, what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immobile object? And that my life depended on it. I crashed. I crashed hard. I ended up seeing a therapist and we talked. Okay. I talked and cried and he listened. And he started me on Lexapro. Seriously, it was the best shit ever. I mean, it was what I labeled as I don't give a shit what anyone else says or thinks about me pill. It, it made me see what was going on in my head without it actually affecting me and made me have the ability to reason logically without all the emotional chaos that was associated with it. I mean, I'm not saying it's for everyone, but it worked for me. It did help me. And for the most part, I've resolved most of my internal conflicts as far as religion and everything like that is concerned. And I look back and I think, yes, I've had bad things happen to me. But it wasn't all bad. I mean, I did have some good times. And a lot of people have asked me, why are you doing this if you moved on? And for the most part, I have. I guess my reasons would be I don't want others to go through the pain that I went through. I don't want them to feel alone. I want people to know that there are people out there that can relate. And I want people to know that my door is open to them when, in whatever form is needed. And I especially want people to know that no matter how bad life seems to be right now, it does get better. I mean, once I left, even while I was going through all of this internal conflicts, I met people, wonderful people, who are very dear and close friends to me. They're my family. They're my new family. And my original family, the only common bond I have with them is genetics now. I mean, I, if I were to talk to any of them, I, I wouldn't be able to relate. And today, today right, now, right now, I have a, I have a wonderful partner. partner. He's, he's the most kind, kind beautiful, 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 beautiful man that I, I've, I've ever known. I think he would do anything, anything for me. I know I know I could do anything for him. For him. I, have, I have three, three beautiful, beautiful dogs. dogs. And my kids, and, kids. and I drink I drink my kids, kids. Yeah, 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 I was in love with I'm not fair. And he's even more than one. He hits the dogs sometimes because they kind of annoy him, but he can never get it. Anyway. That was email, if you heard that. Uh, I, I I now belong to a, a club, which I would have never thought I'd do. 
clubs called the Virginia Mountain Bears. And there are wonderful guys who would, I think, give the shirts off their backs if needed. And I recently joined a couple of groups on Facebook, one called Gay and Lesbian Ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, and the other is the Vast Apostate Army. Both groups are comprised of wonderful, beautiful, and caring people. Very smart, too. Way smarter than me. Um, I've had a lot of help in these groups. A lot of support. And I appreciate each and every member of both groups. And I know most of the most of the members don't know me. But I still want to say that I'm proud to call each and every one of you my friends. And I appreciate all of the, the love, the support, the videos, the information, the friendship, and the fellowship that you've given me. I, I thank you. And life does get better. <laughs>